Good morning and welcome. I'm Dr. Susan and I welcome you to play and learn. I have a couple of wonderful ladies that are joining me this morning. This is Emily Hi. and this is Michelle and they're going to work with me this morning on the story that we're going to share with you today. And I want you to kind of imagine you're laying out in the backyard and you're looking up at the stars and, and just wondering who lives out there and where? Where do they live? Do they live on a star? Do they live on a planet? Or are they in a spaceship? What? What a wondering idea to take that and just lay there and just wonder about it. I know one of the favorite things I used to like to do when I was, well, probably you girls' age, is we had a big maple tree in our front yard. And I liked to lay under the tree and I just loved to watch the clouds. And while I was watching the clouds, I'd make up all kinds of things. Well, that looks like an elephant, that looks like a giraffe, that looks like a mountain, trees, you know, all kinds of fun things. So it's that wonderful spark of our imagination that we get to use. So the story is a little bit about that. The title of the book is, If You Came to Earth. So there's your out in the stars. And the other part to the story is what you need to know. So if you have an alien or a person that you don't really know is coming to see you, what do they need to know about you and about your environment and about your home and your family? What do they need to know? So that they'll have a, some information, number one, and also that they get to have a feel for who you are. Sometimes it's very difficult to meet a stranger and have something to say or have a conversation if you don't know anything. So this is how we're going to do that today. The girls are going to help me with that. But first of all, we're going to listen to the story. And so that is our first project. So the girls are going to listen to the story while I share it with you. So here we go. OK, story time. And there's our books. Oh, Greg is always so amazing with what he does with our, with our uh, screen and our slides. If You Come to Earth by Sophie Blackwall. Blackall, sorry. Two-time Colette medalist. So this, what that means is that, that her stories that she's written, she's received awards for. So that is about it. So she, I'm assuming, because we don't have a listing for a um, person that drew the pictures, that she's also the illustrator. So let's take a look. Dear visitor from outer space, if you came to Earth, here's what you need to know. Pay close attention to the pictures. There's not a whole lot of words, but we'll point out a few things in the pictures, okay? You can find us near a, near a big sun and a tiny moon and a bunch of other planets. Ours is the green blue one. So you guys can pick that out. And there's the tiny moon. And there is the green and blue. So that's part of our solar system. The green and brown bits are land. And the blue stuff is water. And you can see you can see mountains. That's it like if you're hanging upside down looking at the planet. And you can see rivers. And I even see a whale. Can you see the whale in the picture? Did you see it? There's the whale. People mostly live on the land in big cities. Did you see? Have you ever seen your city from far away, like in an airplane, or uh, if you looked, if somebody was riding in a helicopter and they took pictures and you got to see it? And they live in small towns, and they live in tiny villages. Just in the middle of nowhere. That looks like the desert, doesn't it? There's a little house all by itself. We live in all kinds of homes. There is a variety of homes. Now, if you t look close, you're going to see that He's not talking just about the United States. He's talking about other parts of the world. And there's some, I have to get close because we have teeny tiny writing. 
We lost our home in a fire, in a flood, or in a war. And sometimes we, people do lose their, lose their homes, and our communities come together so that we can help people restore that. And that's part of what our community is about. In all kinds of families. Look at the different kinds of families that there are. Do you see maybe your family in there somewhere of what your family does? So think about that. There are more than 7 billion people on earth. We all have bodies, but everybody is different. It's very rare that you would find one that looks like you, except these two. Here we are. Except for my friends who are identical twins and look the same. Except Mufasa's mole. Can you see the little mole on his neck? That's the only thing different about those two. Inside our bodies, or inside, or inside our bodies, yes, inside our bodies, we have our heads, yes, and we think with them. <laughs> inside our heads, we are usually thinking. You can't see our thoughts, but sometimes our feeling shows on our faces. So on the one side, you can see what somebody might be experiencing that gives them that kind of a face. There's kind of sad, and there's happy, and puzzled, and funny. There's all kinds of ways that we express who we are just by looking at our faces. Okay? Even if you don't feel, if you don't feel like it, we get dressed every day. Does everybody get dressed every day? Usually we do. We wear different clothes depending on what we do and where we live and if it's hot or cold. Can you see all the places that different clothes people are wearing? And for different occasions, too. We don't always wear the same clothes. There's lots of different weather in the world. That's a variety on that one side, isn't it? Some of it is good and some of it is bad, depending on where you go. There's a lot of people that just love the snow and they don't consider that bad. And there's other people that really enjoy the rain and they don't consider that bad weather, but some people do. So those are the different kinds of weather that we get to experience. Wherever people live, we usually have to go someplace else. There are lots of ways to get there. There is a variety of ways to get there. Can you see any of the different ways you've gotten from one place to the other? There's cars and there's trains and there's planes and helicopters and a hot air balloon. And uh, hopefully you'll never have to ride in an ambulance. That's getting from one place to the other. There's a police car. There's racing. There's a it looks like a race car that's in there. There's all kinds of things. Yeah. I'm a kid, and kids go to school to learn stuff. So we'll know what we want to do when we are grown up. Do you think you remember and learn all that right away? I think that takes time. <laughs> Grown-ups do lots of things to make the world work. So if you look at that, see if we can pick out some things. I see a singer, and Emily sees a fireman, a, fo a what? A florist, yeah, a florist. I see a seamstress over there. Gymnastics, okay. I see teacher. A what? Yeah, veterinarian. Okay, I see a space person, a spaceman. I see up there in the very far corner is a person that handles bees up there in the very far corner. There's a mailman, right? And there's also people that work with, uh, that build buildings. A doctor, yeah. Oh, might I see there's a janitor? A janitor, yeah. A hairdresser. There's some, um, 
Yeah, there's, well, there's gymnastics, there's drama, there's dance, there's all kinds. Oh, I see a cook. You see a cook? Okay, yeah, they're important. Yeah, all right. But when people are not at work or at school or sick or asleep, we get to do whatever we want. And we can see some of the things that people do for entertainment or for spending time with, it, with one another or enjoying nature, or just enjoying themselves, like reading a book in a tree. Have you ever read a book in a tree? No. <laughs> I don't think I've done that either. Under a tree, yes, yes, but not in a tree. I have not done that. Whatever we are doing, we need to, to eat when we are hungry. Some of us have more food than others. We all need food and water to survive. That is a very big dinner table. Yeah, and if you notice on the dinner table, there's all kinds of different food, too. I see, um, I see a turkey, and I see pizza, I see cake. and cake, yeah, and soups, and fish, and, veg and vegetables. There's all kinds of things. And it's, the food on, the, on that table, right, is from different parts of the world. The sushi, sushi from Japan, sushi. <laughs> We got water from the rain. We get water from the rain, which flows into little streams and big rivers and all the way to the sea. You can't drink the sea because it's too salty. That wouldn't taste very good, was it? Have you ever tasted, have you ever gone to the ocean and swam in it and swallowed some of the water? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It tastes like perfect salt. It's very salty and does not, is not a wonderful taste. The sea looks empty. That's it. And we see a lone boat over there. I see a, I see a little hill. And it looks like a hill or a mountain in the distance. Let's see what's actually there. <laughs> but actually it's full. Fish can swim, but they can't talk or walk. Well, maybe they could, they could really talk in their own language. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what that is, but it's like a mushroom. I don't it's, uh, there's all kinds of things. It's, that looks like an eel. Yeah, there's an eel. Can you imagine that's under the water in the ocean? Mm, yeah. What is that whale called? I think that's a humpback whale. Yeah. There's a sea otter and a stingray and a shark, a bluefin shark. You see a hammer? Yeah, a hammer shark, yeah. There's a lot there. There's a squid, There's an octopus, starfish. See the starfish up in the far corner? There's a flying fish above that. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. And they communicate in their own language. And then there's a little school of fish right in the middle. And they go to school everywhere with each other. <laughs> and shrimp, yes. Most animals can walk or swim or gallop or hop, but they can't fly. And then there's one over there in the corner that says, I can fly. <laughs> See, there is others. I can fly. And there they are. Some birds can swim and walk and fly. So if you had to choose, if you had to choose, what would you be? Why is the thing that you saying I can I oh it says I thought it said I can it says I can't. Oh it can't it can't fly, it can't fly. That's a penguin, I believe. Yeah. But look, at, isn't that a pretty how they used all the different birds and made a design of a bird? Can you see that? Isn't that cool? Yeah, very, very creative. Okay. Birds can sing, so can whales and people. People make all kinds of music and all together. And they do it on their own, too. There's all kinds of instruments up there. Yes, that's right. That's right. Some of us who are deaf talk with our hands and faces. Some of us who are blind read with our fingers. Yeah, on your little fidget. Yeah, you can, you can talk about that, yeah. Yes, the textures and the, the, with their fingers and the... The braille is what it's called. Uh-huh. 
If we are blind, we can imagine colors and shapes and sounds. There are colors you need to paint everything in the world. There's a variety of colors there. <laughs> Somebody really likes that color. Yeah. They've used it. <laughs> That's right. All right. Let's see what else goes on here. Some things are part of nature. We can see all of that. Some things are made by people. Who invented the hanger? Is that an interesting question? Who invented that? <laughs> Maybe we should look that up on the internet. We might be able to find out. We know, do anybody know who uh, invented the light bulb? Oh, um, um, I, I know I know. <laughs> I, I love, Starts I, with an E. Um, Edison. Edison, there you go. I, I it's was, Edison. I was, little, I, was, <laughs> right. it was, I thought I, uh, I was learning about, I was like learning about like a lot of um, famous people. I'm like, I got some famous videos about like them. Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them, yes. But that... All, there's somebody out there that had to create, a, create and think about those ideas so that we could actually use them. Can you imagine there was actually somebody that invented a toilet? <laughs> That's important, too. That's really important. That's really important. Some things are big. Look at the, there's the Eiffel Tower, and there's a skeleton, and there's a cruise ship. And some things are very small. Some are small. Like a ladybug? That's small. Yep, there's a little piece of tape with the words on. Some things are small. There's all kinds of tiny little things up there. Do you see the stamp? Postage. Yeah, do you see the postage stamp? Yep. Yep. I see a little ant. You see an ant, yeah? They are small. All right, let's see what else we find. Some things are invisible. Wind. Invisible cloak. Where are those? <laughs> Ghosts, gravity, electricity, sound waves, germs, <laughs> the smell of roast chicken, old socks, and I don't know what that other word is. I have no idea. What do you think that is? What did it sound like? I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's use that. And wet wool. <laughs> Have, you ever pinky, wet wool. <laughs> Have you ever smelled wet wool? It does, it's not a good smell. Nope. <laughs> Some germs can make us sick. So can making a woolly milk cap toadstool. What is that? Read that. Let's read that again. So can eating, says eating, not making, a woolly milk cap toadstool. Who's up for eating a toadstool? You know what that is? No. It's like a mushroom. Uh, <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> or breathing in smoke or getting splat, sped, spat on by a slow loris. I don't know what a slow loris is. Right there. It's the third one. Oh, is that, oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Ooh. I wouldn't want that to spit at me. No, mm, no thanks. <laughs> Sometimes people get hurt by accidents. So those, yeah, see, there's a toadstool up in the top corner. That's a toadstool. The fourth person in the bed, and then you look up, and then you see Ah, see? Very. That girl, that girl, that girl. Uh-huh. Ah, very good. All right. Yeah, from smoke, yeah. You guys are very clever and have good observation skills. Yeah. And the little girl looks like she uh, hit her knee with a hammer or something. And the young man hurt himself on a skateboard. Wow. Wow. You guys are very clever in watching that. Oh. Mom, mom. Sometimes we hurt each other. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. And we do. 
And sometimes people find ways that aren't healthy for them or anyone else to try to solve their differences. I don't like the bottom. No, I don't like that one either. Let's move through that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's better when we help each other. Aww, so there's a lot going on in that picture. Can you see some of the different things going on? And the lady that is trying to help. Yeah. And I see sharing. Hands in something, yeah. Okay. But there's all kinds of ways that people are helping. And that's at a library, probably in one day. How many people help each other? Babies are not very good at anything. But it doesn't take them long to get good at something. Kids are good at lots of things. Grown-ups can do just about anything until they are really old. <laughs> okay. But by then, the babies are grown up and can help. Here we go back to that help again. So moms and dad helps you when you're little. And then when you get over here on this side, you get to help your mom and dad. Okay. Comes around in a circle, actually. Older people are good at telling stories about the world when they were young. Kids are good at making up stories that haven't happened yet. Do you suppose maybe there's somebody in this room of a, of a young age that might think of something amazing that the world needs? You just never know. There are lots of things we don't know. We don't know where we were, bo where we were before we were born or where we go when we die. But right this minute, we are here together on this beautiful planet. Now, do you notice on the curve of the planet what you see? What do you see? People. Lots of people, right? That's part of the seven billion. Yeah. That's like, that's like um, about like a hundred. Right. But that's just like a lot. Right. If you come to Earth, you can stay in my room. And the little boy's name is Quinn. He says, love Quinn. But you could stay in his room. Okay. The end. Okay. All right. Where's his house? I don't know. I already know that I'm older. I'm uh, well, I'm okay, so what we're going to be doing with the girls is we're going to move this over this way because it's kind of scrunching. There we go. Is that they have what we, we have puzzles this way and we have puzzle pieces here. Emily's already started for us so that you can see, and they can put it on, see on that camera too, honey. So lay it down that way. There you go. That's a good way of showing it. So we have two different puzzles here. We have the one that Michelle has, which is all in one. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to take this big idea of the earth, and we're going to bring it down to our cells, to our individual cells that we talked about a little bit before. If you invited someone to your house, you've never met them before, you don't even know who they are, and you wanted to give them some information, what they might need to know about you. So we're going to do some of that with the girls, okay? We have some different stickers and things, and Emily decided she's going to use the wood pieces of a puzzle. And that's kind of what this is about. It's kind of creating a puzzle of who we are, and by putting the puzzle together, it gives people a picture of us and of what they might expect if they came to visit us. So let's work together on one particular. Let's start out with this one because everybody loves this one. Okay. This one here is food. So if a person came to your house, what kind of food would you serve? I would serve, the food isn't exactly there, but bacon sounds for you. <laughs> uh, filet mignon. Filet mignon? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you serve. <laughs> Are you ready, Dad? Filet mignon is going to be on your dinner plate, right? <laughs> well, that's yesterday. what happened last night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you decide what kind of food you would serve if you had a visitor at your house. And you've already put, have you put coffee? Coffee. You put a cup eggs. of coffee, eggs, taco. And a taco. Okay. Bacon. Okay, we're going to see what she's going to put. Um, but when we put chicken? Fried you, chicken. Uh, when you put ice cream for dessert, you could put anything you want because it's your food. <gasps> what about a donut? Maybe for dessert. Yeah, or you could serve that for breakfast. They spend the night. 
Wow. Oh. happened last night. Yeah, that was good. See, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, hustle, How great. Okay, so were you going to have any other food beside what you put there? Yeah. Okay, well, we can go back to that later. Okay, now let's tell your friend, or your, the person who's going to be your friend after you meet them, let's tell them a little bit about your family. So we have these stickers here that tell you about your family. So why don't you tell me about a little bit about your family, and then we'll go over here and share. So a little bit about your family. So who do you have in your family you could put on your puzzle? I have my mom, my dad, and my Kay. brother. Take your stickers. Okay. And Wait, I forgot about me. Uh, you, got you too, yes. They, you live at your house, yes. Or if you have pets. See, they even have pets here. You can we go can ahead and do yours at the same time. Okay, so put your, so you have you. So find you in there. <laughs> I need a dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, that's okay. I she kind of looked more like you, but, yeah. <laughs> This is my dog, though. Okay, so you have a dog. What's your dog's name? Buddy. Buddy. All right. Oh, I like that. She's kind of pretty. And do you have a pet? Yes. What's your dog's name? Bella. Bella. So, I guess it would be important for our guests to know that if they come to visit, that we have a pet, because they may have allergies. Yeah. And we may have to think about that to be sure that they know that's that that's, that's the situation, right? Or they may be afraid of dogs, Wait. and we would have to we would have to make arrangements so that that they weren't scared. Wait, Bella pretty much always used to go on our crate because we wasn't trained good enough. Yeah. Whenever someone came over. Uh huh. But um, now, now her crate is sitting in her backyard, and we don't know what to do. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Well, she can go in it when she feels like it. Should this be my dad, or this should be my brother, or should this be my brother? Well, why don't you use that for your brother, because we yeah. only have one kind of dad there, and that's not your dad. Yeah, no. <laughs> so we're going to do that. Yeah. So if you have brothers and sisters, they're your dad. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh. Here, let me see if we can bend it. Let's start from the top and see if that works better. There you go. <laughs> He's standing on the. Bella has a very strong head. <laughs> or back. <laughs> Rock hard. Rock hard. Okay, well, maybe it's possible, right? Okay. Oh, gosh. My dad's. Okay, so you have anybody else in your family that you want to put from your picture? No, nope, that's it? All right. Okay. My dad have any siblings, but if I did, I wouldn't. If you did, you wouldn't? <laughs> okay. I know people get annoyed. Okay. I'm, now let I'm a, I don't have a sibling, but I did, wait. A sibling is older. Brother or sister. Okay, well, <laughs> That's a sibling. Okay. So now let's take, let's take our words for a minute. Pick your, pick your la labels up of your words. What kind of feelings would you like people to feel when they came to visit your house? What kind of feelings? So we have the different things here. Okay, you have, what do you have down already, Every Emily? Dream, love, and hope. Okay. Um, do you have? Would you like your like people to feel that there's laughter in your house? Yeah. Okay. You want to use laugh? Yeah. Okay. There's laughter in your house. Yeah. And okay. we have our other one over here too that we can use that has different words. Now I would, if I was making one of these, I would use generations, because living in my house, I have four generations living in my house. You want me to explain that? Yes, please. Four generations. I'll start. I have my mom. She uh, lives with me. She's 95. And then I have my me. And then I have my daughter and my two grandsons. So there's four generations that live in my house. Got that? There's grandma. They have great grandma, my grandsons. They have me as grandma. Then they have their mom and then themselves. So there's four generations that live in my house. You, get, you having trouble getting that off? <laughs> you need some help? Okay, so let's see. What other words would you use that would describe? So you use those. Do you have an inspiring household? I, I, I don't know what that means? I don't know. Inspiring, like confident? Ins well, it, it's a little bit like confident. Inspire means that there's Everybody helps everybody else continue to grow. 
and to be the best they can be. They help inspire the other people to do that that live in their house. Okay, that's what inspire is. And then do you have people that create in your house? Yes. Uh -huh. So we want to use that one. <laughs> okay, and we're talking about create. So let's go to this one for just a minute. Let's go to this one. This is your arts. There's also creativity in our homes. There's a lot of people that like to do, go ahead and pick what you want. There's a lot of people that like to do what painting. Said. She said, art is life. And that is so true. Mama, it is. You never stop, um, you never stop uh, creating. Every single time I'm bored, I just get on my iPad and go to my drawing app. And All right. Drawing and so why don't you put something that relates to your drawing app? There you go. Okay, sketchbook. Or you can you can use more than one puzzle piece. Sure. Like gallery, it's like a sketchbook. Yeah, it's like a sketchbook. Does anybody paint? I do. Okay, you want to use your, you want to use a paint palette? And there's an actual easel. Can you do the easel? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Now, so we've given this our <laughs> you've given our visitor different things about who we are. Now, if they came to visit, how would they get to your place? Let's say they came from England. How would they get there? Airbus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oops. We only have one of these. Uh, okay. Yours comes from England, so take an airplane. Okay, that's an airplane. Yours comes from Maine. How would they get there? The ticket. There you go. Perfect. They got to have to have a ticket for the airplane ride. Wait, I feel like that would be good because like it's like drive, like it's like going. Yes, absolutely. Wait, and. Yes, we can. I'll get pens out. You can use those in just a second. Okay, and let's see. Do you think they'll want to bring a camera with them to take pictures? Yes. Yes? Mm, yeah. Okay. Do you want anybody to come from a different part of the world? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I do. <laughs> just so they speak English, right? <laughs> it's easy to understand. Yeah, you have that. I do. Well, people could come. Well, when, even when you well, come from. My house. <laughs> not in your house. Okay, so we have that. But do you guys do you like to ride bicycles for exercise? Yeah. You want to I put a bicycle on yours? Santa Monica. I made that to Santa Monica there. Yeah. Okay. No one ever said they were coming. <laughs> wow. They're not coming in my. They're not coming in my house, and I'm never gonna. Okay. Now let's talk about. And you have where's yours? Here it is. This one is about family. I talked about talked about generations. So what are what are some of the words we have? Generations, which we talked about. Heritage, you know what that means? Give me a rough guess. Uh, what do you think? Like a long time ago, like learning about ancestors sort of thing? Yeah, where your heritage is, right. It's like, do you have a food or that, that maybe your grandmother or your great-grandmother cooked? The cake. cake. Cake, what kind? Of, a special kind of cake? No, just cake. Just cake, just cake, okay. But that might be, she, does she like to bake? Yes. Okay, maybe that would be part of her heritage, that she learned how to bake. So you could use heritage. And tell me one of your, Emily, what is one of your family traditions? Do you know what that is? Um, well, not this year. It's not going to happen, but every time my name and granddad come over for my birthday. Okay, and that's a family tradition, yeah. right? Okay, so you could, take, this year. you could take your word tradition and, and put that there. there. And you could take heritage and put that on yours. Now, you live in your house. Do you ever create memories? Yeah, sort of. Sort of? You sort of create memories? I have, I have this camera, and I have this whole big, giant book, and it has my first Christmas, my mm -hmm. first um, airplane ride. Cool. Well, not my first. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. First Christmas. This is Christmas is a long time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Um, I, was, I was born in January. So memories. September. So maybe memories <laughs> Memories would be something that you could put down here because we do create memories in our house. You, it was your birthday, like you made a holiday, remember? Oh, you mean um, it's something um, Martin Luther King Jr.? Yes. That's Luther King Jr. Yeah, that's January. That was on my birthday. I thought that was or something. No, it's not January the 15th, but it landed on my birthday. Isn't that exciting? Yes. 
There's oh, memories yeah. for you. <laughs> okay. Now, oh. does, here's an important question for you. The pinch. Yeah. <laughs> well, you. I think it'll peel off if you're going to put it somewhere else. Now, here's one of the other things, is that how much love lives in your house? Well, my, I don't. I don't see my brother that often. Well, do you have to see him. somebody to love somebody? No. No, you don't. That's about how much. Yeah. That's how much. That would be how much you create and give. What about everybody else in your family? Um, how much does that one give you? I don't feel like hardly. My doggy, he. he Whenever I put lotion on, she comes and licks my hand, so I put it on my forehead once. And she <laughs> <laughs> That's but she likes your lotion. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the, uh, the hearts would depict the kind of love that you give to your family and that your family gives back to you. Okay? There's that part. Now, well, if now this... My brother's out of it. <laughs> well, you can fix that later. <laughs> now, what I want two girls to take a look at we can use pens. these colored pens, or you can use the Sharpies. Oh, Sharpie. Do you like Sharpies better? Okay, this is for the second part. We're going to finish this up in about five minutes, okay? While you guys are doing this last part, excuse me if I move out of the camera range. Okay, with this last part, I'm going to be reading something from the book because... You could show this to somebody, and they could tell you a little bit about who you are in your house. So let's find out what I'm going to have you do. So now what I'm going to have you do is use your creative and your ideas and things that you would like to express to this person that comes to visit you. Okay, where would you take them? Would you take them somewhere special? Would you just find things at home that you find that they might find fascinating to do? Okay, so while I'm reading this last part of the book, I'm going to read a little bit about how this book was created because it's very important. I'm going to have a whole puzzle piece dedicated to my favorite color. Well, that's fine. That's fine. So the last part of what this is is this is some of the things. This is the questions that the little boy Quinn wanted to ask the visitor. How many eyes do you have? <laughs> now, he's thinking of this as somebody being in, you know, outer space. Are you big or small? Do you have pets? When is your birthday? Maybe putting your birthday on there would be a nice idea. Wait, but how do you spell James? Use one. <laughs> one. Oh. Oh, yeah, right. oh, yeah. You can do that, too. That's okay. All right. Is it always dark where you are? These are interesting questions. Are you going to visit us? <laughs> you, you're not going to go visit an alien? Okay. My friends and I want to know. That was one of the things. That was the last questions that he was thinking of that he might want to ask. But the idea from this book, and I'm going to do, uh, read that to you, the author is Sophie. And while you guys do your pictures and create the things that you would have do with your visitor that came to visit, okay, she says... As the idea for this book took shape, I knew there needed to be one kid writing the letter. I met thousands of smart, endearing children. How could I possibly choose one of them to be the narrator? That's the one that told the story. Then I met Quinn. Quinn's brother, Elliot, was busy with a lizard. So I asked Quinn all kinds of questions, ending with what kind of snack would you give a visitor from another planet? I'm going to ask you guys that. What kind of a snack would you give a visitor from another planet? Depends what person's coming. If it was an alien. No, I'm just asking in general. Okay. What kind of a snack would you give them? A homemade pizza. A pizza. Okay. <laughs> All right. You'd give them a pizza. Homemade people. Homemade. homemade pizza. Okay. You can put pizza down there. What would you do? What would you give them? Salad? Because it yeah. can't grow down from this planet. <laughs> Do you know that for sure? No. <laughs> I know not lettuce or anything. <laughs> not lettuce. Lettuce has well, conditions. Yes, that's true. 
All right, well, this is what Quinn's answer was. Mashed potatoes, he said without hesitation, because we don't know if they have teeth. Ah! Ah! <laughs> That's a very good idea. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. And then he said... I can relate. <laughs> He handed over 17 drawings he made on flashcards while we were talking of different planets and the possible inhabitants that he would see there. There are million, nearly 8 billion people on planet Earth. I could only fit a small number in this book. Some are my friends, neighbors, and families I saw picnic at a central park. So I met on a, some I met at a market in one of the foreign countries I visited, Beijing, Beijing is one, and Sydney, I visit, met people and children, a cow stall on a dairy farm. Wow. They met children in a cow stall on a dairy farm. What do you think those kids were doing? A cow? cow. A, a dairy farm? What do you think they were doing? Uh, milking cows. There you go. <laughs> Would you, do you know how to milk a cow? No. No. I've never I milked. think I too, sort of, in a way. I never Have will. you had that experience? No, but I know sort of what to do. <laughs> okay, well, good for you. <laughs> so the, I'm just going to paraphrase the rest of this letter. But what the author did is she went around and she asked questions of all kinds of boys and girls to find out all the things that they could think about if a visitor from outer space came to see them. And the story came fr from basically from the idea that Quinn had all these pictures of all these things that he thought was possible in outer space. So what we've done here is we've created pictures of who you are and how you would greet someone that has never met you and to show them who you are, and to show them what kind of a life you have. And what that does, you know what that does when you have information like that that you give someone? What that creates? Rough guess? Can you, uh, wait, can, you, can you repeat the sentence? I forgot. What kind of, when you give all this information, what kind of a thing have you done to greet the visitor? Um, when you gave him all this information, or he... Like, or they looked at this, or they looked at like this. They would um, tell you some stuff about them. There you go. They have, it gives it a space Wait. for conversation. Wait. And discovery. Wait, do you spell friend F-R-I-E-N-D? Yes, you do. Okay. Good job. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, while the girls finish up their work of art here, and they'll be able to take that home with them today, uh, we have a happy and a sad in this combination is this is our last live streaming that we'll be doing for Play and Learn, the Play and Learn series on a Sunday. We will possibly do more of them differently later, but this is what we'll be doing the last for this. We've been with you for eight, almost, almost 16 months, I think is how long we've been doing this. And I counted up all the stories that we've shared, the books, the different things that we've created. We've done 110 books in the last 16 months. My favorite color is blue. And so, so we would invite you, if you want to go back and visit us, you can do it on our YouTube channel. All of our shows are there. So you can visit us there and possibly recreate some of the things that we've done or hear some of the stories that you enjoyed that we did. Yes, ma'am. Can I write my name there in the blue box? Yes, I certainly. No, right, right there. Right next to here. You want it small or big? Uh, I don't care. You don't. You care. <laughs> they don't care. You just okay. write. Okay. You can just write my name. Okay. I'm gonna write my name. There we go. Okay, let's go. All right. So I thank you all, each and every one of you that have joined us on the the mornings that we participated, and all the funs that we've shared, and some of the silly stuff that we've done, and some of the stuff that we thought was a good idea and didn't turn out being such a good idea. But we tried anyway. <laughs> so I want to thank you very much. And I am uh, knowing absolutely that as you guys continue to grow and change, you will be one of those people that changes the world. 
And I know there's two people right here that will do that. So thank you very much. Can you guys say goodbye and thanks Bye. for sharing with us? Okay. Thanks very much, everybody, and I hope to see you soon. Take care.